So as we continue our study on the early church in the book of Acts, we see the Holy Spirit pouring over and into God's people. And I believe, and we know this for a fact, that God's going to do that again. And I believe it's in our lifetime. May we learn to seek and wait for His Spirit. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have Jesus, your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. I know I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again We're going to sing that hallelujah, amen Jesus, you're still
when there was no way And I believe I'll see you do I'll it see again you move. I'll see you move You move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way When there was no Jesus, your promises will never fail us. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, church family, and happy Sabbath, friends. You know, I want to have a special greeting real quick for, to our friends from South Africa. I think it's really special that they worship with us every Sabbath. I think we ought to acknowledge them that they are always worshiping, regularly worshiping with us. God bless you guys all the way down there. So today we are going to have another special, special Sabbath. And uh, Pastor David is going to continue our series on the book of Daniel called End Time Faith. I'm looking forward to what God has in store for us through Pastor David today. Let me just uh, say a couple things and uh, we'll open up with a, with a scripture. But uh, first thing is, uh, please remember that we are trying to finish the year off with focusing on giving to our local budget. Uh, God has been so good to us this year with our giving, and we just want to really strengthen that local budget this year. It really goes towards our operating expenses, and there are still a lot of things that we, uh, we need to do for the kingdom. So please keep that in mind, and I really, really appreciate that. Second thing is, the month of December is going to look very different, as if this whole year hasn't been different already, but the month of December... We are going to be partnering with the Hinsdale Church, and we're going to have worship together. It's going to be fantastic. I'm so excited about that. I think unity is going to bring a lot of blessing to us as we worship with our sister church in the month of December. So look forward to that. And uh, I just want to read from Psalms 145, verse 18. And Psalms 145, verse 18 says, and this is a promise, the Lord is near unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. May we turn our hearts towards Christ today, who is the way, the truth, and the life. God bless you all, and let's have a wonderful, wonderful worship service and a wonderful Sabbath together. Amen. Good morning, happy Sabbath, church family. As we continue to navigate through these tough times together, I pray that your joy would not be taken from you, that you would remember that we have a good, good God who loves us, who is faithful to us, who will never leave us, never forsake us. Amen. Let's all sing. No height or depth could separate. No There's never been anyone like you 
never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. There's never been anyone like you. Never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. There's never been. There's never been anyone like you. Never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. There's never been anyone like you. Never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hope is rising. Oh, hope is rising like the sun. The old is gone, the new has come. I fix my eyes on Christ alone. My rock, my shield, my cornerstone. We sing God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Let's all sing, God, you are good. God, you are Jesus, for your goodness. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creations revealed. From the colors of fog to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All-powerful, untamable, all struggle we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. Who has told, who has told every lightning bolt where it should go? Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and gave source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom indescribable Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful, untamable, all shuckle we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing God. You are amazing God You are amazing God Indescribable, uncontainable You, you place, place the stars in the sky and you know them by name 
place of stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable Our struggle we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim You are amazing God Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God Incomparable, unchangeable You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same You are amazing God
Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. Please join us as we bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you are our ultimate source of strength. When we are weak, you are strong. You lift us up when we are down. You renew our strength and we soar on wings like eagles. Thank you, Father, for always raising us up with your mighty hands. How strong our bonds are depends on you, Lord, which is why we ask you to always be the center of our family relationships. Enable our families to be like a triple braided cord that cannot easily be broken. May your spirit fill our hearts so we can love each other just as Christ loves us. In these uncertain times, Lord, we look to you because life can hand us many different challenges that we know we cannot face on our own. But with you, nothing is impossible. We believe that you will always grant us the endurance to overcome any obstacle that may come our way. So to that, dear God, may we continue to humbly yet boldly proclaim your word and wisdom to those around us. Let us fully lean in that we may live and breathe the amazing power of prayer. Help us to be believers who stand firm and never give up on you. All of this we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's good to be back here at Hinsel Philam. I'd like to wish you all a um, happy Sabbath and say good morning too. Um, let's bow our heads and say a word of prayer. Dear Lord and our loving Father, as I come before you, I want to ask that you be with my words today. Help them to be clear um, and help it to be a blessing. Help the message that I share to be a blessing to everyone that is here and everyone that's watching online. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. According to a recent Gallup poll, 94% of Americans claim to believe in God or a universal spirit. However, a quick glance at scripture and our culture makes it plainly obvious that nowhere near 94% actually know about God. Now, some people know about God by reputation. You know, maybe they've been to the church a few times. Maybe they've heard Bible stories. Maybe they have a favorite Bible verse, but it's only secondhand. Some people, they know God through their memories. You know, they used to be so passionate about God. They knew him years ago but they can't say that they really know him now. Like, they, they kind of disconnected. And some people still know God today. They pray daily. They try to understand his will by reading his word, and they share what they know about him to other people. It says in Deuteronomy 4, verse 29, But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. This same thought is mirrored in Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And that one says, You will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. So, just because we do good doesn't mean we know the one who is good. You know, God is interested not only in our actions, but he's also interested in our hearts. In particular, he's interested in our attitude toward him. Some of us try to earn God's acceptance without truly knowing his heart. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. My, my topic, you know, Pastor Glenn's been talking about Daniel 1 um, to 6 these last few weeks. And I actually kind of want to summarize that. My topic is from religion to relationship. And to be fair, it starts at religion, and then there's a resolution, and then you end with a relationship. And I want to show you what Daniel says about going from a religion to a relationship. It says in Matthew 7, verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And so let's pick this up in Daniel 6 and verse 10. So if you have your Bibles with me, go to Daniel 6 and verse 10. It says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, this was the writing of the Medes and the Persians, the writing said that if, if Daniel or if anybody bows down and prays to anybody else except for the king, he's going to get thrown into the den of lions. So this decree was signed. And when Daniel knew it was signed, he went home. And in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day. He prayed and he gave thanks before his God as was his custom since the early days. Now, so let's start there, right? You just get a law. A law is passed where you are only allowed to pray 
to somebody, not even to God. And Daniel doesn't change his routine. He doesn't change what he's been used to doing. He's been building a relationship with God for multiple years now. And one law is not going to change what he decides to do about his relationship. So let's go through the book of Daniel. Let's go through some of the stories that Pastor Glenn has already talked about. And let me show you what happened. Let's go to Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. So actually, let's start in Daniel 1. So a lot of the best and the brightest, as the prophet Jeremiah predicted, were taken by Nebuchadnezzar all the way to Babylon. Um, and they were taken away from their families, away from their friends. Um, these people, if you look at Daniel chapter 1, it says, the king in, uh, verse 3, the king instructed the master of the eunuchs, Ashpenaz, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants, some of the noble, young men in whom was no blemish, good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, and possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had the ability to serve in the king's palace, and who was able to learn other languages and literature of the Chaldeans. So they're smart, they're handsome, right? Um, they're very diplomatic. And you list them, and faith is not included in this list. There's, a, there's an old quote. It says, in youth and beauty, wisdom is rare. I, I can switch that quote and say, in youth and beauty, sometimes faith is rare. You know, Daniel probably grew up in the church. And by the church, I mean the synagogue. He knew the rules. He followed, he followed the regulations. He went to church every Saturday. But here he's taken away from his family. He's taken away from his friends. And he's in a country that he's never seen before. They say that a lot of people lose their faith when they go from high school to college. A lot of the teenagers that we know today lose their faith when they go from high school to college or university. The reason why is because they went to church for a long time. They followed the rules because their parents asked them to follow it. It was a religion for them. It was something they did every week. They came to church to meet their friends. They came to church because they didn't want to, their parents were on their case. They came to church for many different reasons, maybe to meet somebody. But then you go to, you go to college, you go somewhere else. And the question is, do you really want to still go to church? Are your friends there? If your friends don't go, will you go? If you are not looking for somebody, are you going to potentially look for someone in the church? If your parents are not there to force you to go, are you still going to go to church? It's, this is a preacher's license, but it's, it, it might be my personal belief. I think that Daniel um, followed religion before he had a relationship with God. Um, the writings of Paul say that the law is actually our tutor to bring us to Christ. So Daniel followed a religion before having a relationship. And here's where the turning point is. Daniel 1 verse 8, it says, But Daniel resolved in his heart, or Daniel purposed in his heart, that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies or with the wine that he drank. Right? So Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not do this. Um, I want to point something out. He doesn't say, I'm purposing in my heart for my friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It says, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine he drank. This was not a group decision. This was not, oh, he gathered his friends together, and together they are going to do this um, do this fast together. Daniel said, I, I'm here in a foreign land. I don't know too many of the people. I don't know barely any of the people. What if I started to take God seriously? What if I made a resolution that I'm going to start following the laws of God? I have no idea what's going to happen to me, but here, where, where the future is uncertain, I want to make certain that I am following God with all my heart and all my soul. And I'm going to start, Daniel said, I'm going to start with food, with healthy eating. So he started to do that, and something happened. Like he brought his friends into it, 
if you go down to verse, um, to verse 12, Daniel says to the, the, to the steward of the chief of the eunuchs um, that were over Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, and himself, in verse 12, please test your servants 10 days and give us vegetables to eat and waters to, water to drink. I don't know how many of you took on the, the fast that, uh, or the Daniel challenge that Pastor Glenn suggested, but they took on the fast and Daniel's friends joined in. We'll come to their friends in a second. At the end of 10 days, the king found them 10 times wiser than everybody else. And it says in verse 17 that Daniel had understanding in visions and in dreams. That's Daniel chapter 1. In Daniel 2, King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And he can't remember what it is. And he, you know, he calls all the wise men and everybody. They don't know what it is. So he says, I'm going to kill you guys if you don't know what it is. And Daniel and his friends are going to be killed. But Daniel says, wait, why is the king's decree so urgent? And he says in, verse, in Daniel 2, verse 16, Daniel went in to the king and he said, can you give me some time that I might be able to get the interpretation? Daniel's asking for time, but what Daniel is really doing is he's saying, you know what? I want to pray about this. It, it's kind of sad that sometimes... Um, I'm going to say it this way. Sometimes I wonder if the Bible is silent in some parts of our life and is more vocal in others. Um, if you just follow with me, imagine if Daniel's life was just a regular Jewish boy going to church week after week, Sabbath after Sabbath, following the laws of his parents. Daniel chapter 1, he starts to follow the health laws. Daniel 2, he gets into a crisis. And today we get into a crisis and it's like, I'm going to call my best friend. I'm going to call my parents. I'm going to call my boss and say I can't come in. But what if in a crisis you go to God? That's what Daniel did. Daniel's like, hold on, don't kill us. I, we need some time. He doesn't tell the king, I'm going to go pray. But not only does he go pray, he goes to his friends and he's like, God, guys, let's pray together. Um, maybe God will, like, God will get us out of this. And so he prays and he gets to the vision and he explains Daniel to, he explains the statue, the head of gold, chest and arms of silver. He explains all of that to King Nebuchadnezzar. Let's go to Daniel chapter 3. In Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar decides to make a big golden idol and he asks them to bow down. Now this time, Daniel is not there. It's just Hananiah, Azariah, and uh, Mishael. Sorry, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the question is, what are they going to do? And so at the sound of all these musical instruments, they're supposed to bow down. And they say, you know what? We like the example of Daniel. We, are, we like the resolution of Daniel. We are going to take a stand. And even if we are going to get thrown into the fiery furnace, we will still not bow down and worship the golden image that you set up. So they take a stand. Now, something happened, right? Daniel, the book of Daniel is written mostly um, by one person, Daniel. But chapter 4 is written by Nebuchadnezzar. And chapter 4 starts out, you know, I am Nebuchadnezzar, I, you know, I did these things. And Nebuchadnezzar gets a vision. And he's like, what exactly does this mean? And so he calls Daniel. He's like, Daniel, you know what? I've, I know what you've done before. You've interpreted dreams before. Please interpret this one for me. And so Daniel interprets this dream. And you know, it, it happens to Nebuchadnezzar. I'm not going to go over Pastor Glenn's sermon. But Nebuchadnezzar ends up exactly what happened in the prophecy. He's eating grass like an ox for seven times, for seven years. And finally, finally at the end, he acknowledges that God alone is sovereign. So check this out. I want you to imagine that Daniel started with religion. He just went to church like everyone did. He did stuff like all of his friends did. But there in a different country, in a different area. Some of you were born in a different country. Some of you immigrated to America. Some of your parents immigrated to America. Some of you come from different countries. Some of you are, have gone to college or are going to college somewhere different. Some of you are entering a new job force. Some of you are looking at the world and saying, you know what, the world of COVID-19 is not the world that it was a year ago. And things are different. And so Daniel resolves, 
I'm going to start following God. Then he gets into a crisis and it's like, I'm going to start praying to God and I'm going to involve some other Christians with me. Then the friends get tested on their own and they take up the resolution. They say, you know what? We are going to stand. Even if Daniel is not there, we have a relationship with God already because we've been praying to him. We are going to take a stand. And Nebuchadnezzar, who's been hearing this and watching them, he says, you know what? I'm going to go ask Daniel to pray about it. And finally, Nebuchadnezzar actually decides to follow God. Let's go to chapter 5. In chapter 5, we have Belshazzar. And you know the story about the writing on the wall, right? In verse 13, Daniel was brought in before the king because Daniel was asked, hey, can you explain the writing? Now, in Daniel 5, it doesn't talk about, oh, Daniel went and he's like, I need time to pray about this first. Daniel probably had been praying regularly. Um, he had already built up that relationship. And so he sees the writing on the wall, Mene, Mene, Tekel of Harsin. And Daniel knows what it is because he's starting to understand what it is to know the will of God. By spending this, from going from religion to um, resolution to relationship, he's starting to understand what God wants. And so he tells him in verse 22, he says, you Belteshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar, your grandfather or your father, according to the Bible, you did not humble your heart like your grandfather did. You lifted yourself against the God of heaven and you started praising all these other gods. Well, your kingdom has been weighed in the balances and found wanting because you knew the story. So Daniel's resolution started from one young person deciding, I'm going to start following God in something small, right? Then I'm going to start following God in something big. That's how you build trust, by the way. Another word for faith is trust. You start with something small. Just, I don't know, I'm going to not eat pork anymore. I'm going to stop eating, sneaking pepperoni pizza or something. And then it goes to trusting God through crises. Then Daniel's friends get influenced. Then the king gets influenced. And the nation gets influenced with what happens. I think that's amazing. You know, we can trace every, everything in the Bible, every story. Every story of faith in God can be traced to a re resolution and a relationship. When Christians get called, a lot of times they don't have faith right away. They might have religion, but then they make a resolution to start following God. And then they eventually have a relationship. So you'll notice that the disciples, when they follow Jesus, they did not follow Jesus based on a religion. They're, they're not like, oh, this is a good speaker. Um, we are going to follow him wherever he is. They built up a relationship with Jesus. Jesus said, come, follow me. And they made a resolution to start spending time with Jesus. After three and a half years, their relationship built. They had seen they had heard Jesus talk, but they had seen him heal the sick, right? They had seen the lame walk, the deaf hear, the blind see. They had seen the dead raised to life. Peter had even gone and walked on water. He had gotten out of the boat and he'd walked on water. And so when it came down to those people deciding, am I going to stand up for my faith or not? They said, I'm going to stand up for my faith even if it means death. Other people say, you know what? You don't want me to go to church? Fine, I'm not going to go back to church. I don't need to go worship on Sabbath. I don't need to do worship anymore. But these guys, they're like, we are not going to, we're going to continue practicing our faith no matter what. That determination comes from a relationship. It comes from a strong relationship with one another. There's a story that's told of this pastor, he goes to, um, his, his grandmother died, and his mom called him and said, hey, you know, there's some stuff that you might want to look at. We're going to give it to the Salvation Army, but take a look and see what it is. And so they go to the attic, and there's a bunch of plates. They open it, and they're like, oh, it's like, it's blue plates. But he hands, picks it up. It's the most exquisite china dishes 
they'd ever seen, like ceramic. Each plate had been individually painted, hand-painted with forget-me-nots. The cups were inlaid with mother of pearl, and the dishes in the cups were rimmed with gold. And all of this was plates that dated from the Second World War. This was really, really valuable. And what happened was that their grandmother, um, you know, some people have a room in their house that they never use, it's for a special guest. Well, these plates, she had gotten one piece at a time, and they were so valuable that um, they were only going to be used for special guests. So she wrapped it carefully and preserved it and kept it, and got another one wrapped and preserved it, got another wrapped and preserved it. And finally, the grandmother passed away, and not a single plate, not a single dish had ever been used. You know, the, the worst thing you could do with a gift is to never open it and to never use it. That actually defeats the entire purpose of the gift, right? The gift is intended to be used. Let me give you another contrast. Um, I want you to imagine somebody who just got their driver's license. And I know some people listening just got their driver's license. If you've ever seen a teenager excited, the first time they get their driver's license, that's, that's why insurance ratings are so high for them, um, they want to go places, they want to do something, right? Contrast that to people who are now, and no offense to anybody in their middle ages, but people who are in their middle ages now, who spend their time in front of the, t in front of the TV, in, fr in, in Netflix, watching whatever is on, you know? And in the past, they were all fired up. They had so many amazing plans for the future. They wanted to leave their mark on the world. But somewhere along the line, the fire went out, and they settled for comfort. That's a story of unrealized potential. I'm going to read this, this poem. It's called The Common Cold of the Soul. It says, to the sinful patterns of behavior that never get confronted and changed, abilities and gifts that never get cultivated and deployed, until weeks become months, and months turn into years. And one day you look back at life, at a life of deep, intimate, gut-wrenchingly honest conversations that you never had, great, bold prayers that you never prayed, exhilarating risk that you never took, sacrificial gifts that you never offered, lives you never touched, and you're sitting in a recliner with a shriveled soul and forgotten dreams, and you realize there was a world of desperate need, and there was a great God calling you to be part of something bigger than yourself. You see the person you could have become, but did not. You never followed your calling. You never got out of the boat. There is no tragedy like the tragedy of the unopened gift. Daniel was a young person with a lot of talent. Daniel was eventually, based on what he did, he was able to interpret visions and dreams. He was a smart person. You know, a lot of people don't do things because they're scared to take that step forward. They're scared to speak up because what if they get criticized? They're scared to, to move because what if, like, let me say this to you. Some people say, I would develop my gifts more thoroughly but I have a boss who stifles my initiative. I would pursue another job, but I need the money and security. I need familiarity. I'm too scared to take a risk. They say, I would grow in my capacity for intimacy, but my spouse isn't interested. I would devote myself more to spiritual growth, but I don't have time. I would have realized more of my potential, but nobody mentored me. We play the when-then game. When I feel confident, then I will show that I can actually play piano. When I feel confident, then I will show that I can actually sing at church. When I feel confident, then I can actually show that I can play guitar or bass guitar. A lot of our younger kids can do it, but they've been shy to show their potential. A lot of the older ones know how to. Some people say, you know, when my family is supportive, I will grow. When my spouse is more cooperative, I'll be a better partner. When climate changes for the better, when COVID-19 is over, 
when the president is, that is elected is in my favor or when the president elected is not in my favor, right? It's a when-then game. Daniel did not have a choice. Well, he did. He got pushed into making a decision because he was in a different country. There was a crisis, and he made a resolution to follow God. I wonder what it would have happened had Daniel never been taken out of his hometown. If Daniel had never left Jerusalem, would he still be following the religion? Would he never have made a re resolution to have a relationship with his Lord and Savior? Daniel's decision made a very big difference in his life, in the lives of his friends, in the lives of the king, and in the life of his country too. Um, his reputation spread. His reputation, not his reputation, but the reputation of his trust in his God is what spread. We have a lot of people in church that have a religion, but who don't have a relationship. Sorry, we have a lot of people who have left church, who had a religion, but who never had a relationship. Daniel 1 to 6, those, three, those six chapters tell of what happens if we decide to step forward. When are you going to step up? When are you going to share with your neighbor about your faith? When are you going to take family worship seriously? When are you going to start opening the Bible in the morning? When are you, you say prayer is important, but when are you going to start praying? What resolution can you make to build your relationship with God? If all you have is religion, you will not make it. Religion will not take us to heaven. Relationship will. And so my appeal today is that you would make a resolution to make your relationship stronger. If there is something that you are watching that you should not watch, make a resolution to stop. If there's something you're doing that you should not be doing, make a resolution to stop doing that. That's negative, right? Let's go positive. If you can make a resolution to start spending more time in the Word, start really opening your heart out to God. Imagine if the next time there's a crisis, instead of going to your friends or blasting it on social media, you go to God and you bring it to prayer. What difference would it make? So my appeal and I'd like you to find a quiet place um, to think about this, is find, if you, if you realize that all you've had all these years, or maybe you've faded, but you've had, a re, you've had a religion, not a relationship, make a resolution to make that difference today. Some people remember God in passing. They remember the stuff that, they were, that, that happened before. Some people remember God in their memories. Some people have a relationship right now. I pray that your relationship with God would grow as you resolve to not just have a religion, but to have a relationship with our Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for giving us a chance to just experience what Daniel experienced. His life was changed, the lives of his friends were changed, the life of the king was changed, and many people, including us, are still reading these stories. And sometimes we read Daniel and we think it's only about prophecy, when really the story of Daniel, at least the first half, is going from religion to relationship. The second half is going to be covered next week, but I ask dear Lord that you um, bless us with your spirit, that you give us wisdom, and that you convict our hearts to have a desire to spend more time with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we make that stand, make that commitment, that no matter what, we would choose our relationship with God above all else, even if our lives depended on it. stood before creation eternity in your hand you 
spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stand you stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame shoulders my soul now to stand so what can I say and what can I do but offer this heart over complete So I walk, so I walk upon salvation, your spirit alive in me, my life to declare your promise, my soul now to stand. So what? What can I say? And what can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. What can I say? So what can I say? What can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. Let's make this declaration. I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned In awe of the one who gave it all I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered All I am is yours I'll stand I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. I'll stand. So what? So what could I say? And what could I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you.
I've seen you move. Jesus, your promises will never fail us.